All right, hello everyone. We'll go ahead and get started as we start getting a couple people showing up here. It's 11 o'clock on the dot. Appreciate you guys for joining us live. We're gonna do a little bit of a different format, so it may seem uh, a little different for you right now. Um, typically, you're used to seeing webinar slides, you're used to seeing um, you know, the presenter's face in a little box. I wanted to try a different format because I, I feel that webinars are getting a little bit boring, so I wanted to try and I'm doing it as a live webcast in front of a, um, in front of a whiteboard that was prepared for me because my handwriting is terrible. So I didn't want you guys to have to suffer through that. Um, but I'll give it a couple of minutes as people jump in. Um, if you are attending, please just in the comments, uh, let me know where you're from, what company you're with. Um, I'm excited that you're joining. I appreciate you being here. And for those of you that have blocked time, um, we'll probably go for about 30 or 45 minutes on the webinar. Um, super excited um, to share some content with you guys today. Uh, I had to write down my notes because I tried doing it on paper, uh, just handwriting it, and I can't read my own handwriting. So um, I had to get them printed out. So hopefully I don't ramble too much and we can stick to the agenda. Um, we'll give it a couple more minutes um, so everyone get in, and then we'll go ahead and jump right into the content. Um, if you guys aren't waiting around too much longer for the content here. So Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first things first, uh, for you guys that are new here, I'm Xavier. I am the head of demand gen here at Televerde. Um, and today's topic, as you can see, is on, on how to skyrocket your B2B telemarketing efforts. So here at Televerde specifically, I'm in charge of coming up with all of our demand gen campaigns to feed our internal sales team. So what does that mean? Um, it means that I get to test out a bunch of different things that we ultimately apply to our clients. Our clients come to Televerde, um, if you are a client of Televerde or looking as, to, as a potential prospect of Televerde, we exist to help um, B2B companies drive more demand and generate revenue through coordinated campaigns. And telemarketing happens to be a piece of that campaign. And today I'm going to talk about how you can utilize telemarketing to be more effective in your campaigns. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, telemarketing is almost like a curse word for me. Um, if you know me at all, on my iPhone, my phone is always on Do Not Disturb which means I don't answer any calls. I don't take telemarketing calls. If it's not from someone that I know that, or that's on my friends list, the phone call usually doesn't get through. It goes straight to voicemail, and then I don't listen to my voicemail. So if you leave me a voicemail, I'm probably not gonna hear it, but, which is why in my voicemail I say, hey, leave me a text message if it's important. Otherwise, I'm not gonna get to it because I am on the receiving end of a ton of telemarketing calls. Because as a marketer, there's SDRs, BDRs, ADRs, whatever you want to call it, always trying to sell me something. And I've been in the marketing space for almost a decade now. Um, and your name and email gets circulated by so many different companies, whether you're here anywhere, hey, um, where you're, whether you're here anywhere, um, someone is always um, has your contact info and they're always trying to reach out to you. So we're going to talk about how to make telemarketing more effective. So so in the B2B space, which is where we exist, um, telemarketing um, kind of is not frowned upon, but is, uh, it's not the best way of communication. So if you're telemarketing right now, my guess is that you probably don't have the best contact rates. So you're calling out into a campaign to a prospect, you have a list of data that you got from Discover Org, or you got it from some list source, and you're calling on that data. You have SDRs that are actively reaching out, trying to, to generate meetings, to generate interest, drive demand for your product. And your contact rates, what we've seen industry-wide, you know, are a couple of percentage points. They're not very high. So how can you make your telemarketing more effective? Um, specifically for, for us here, we found that telemarketing is a peg on the stool. So if you can think about a stool, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw here, even though this was a design. Uh, if you think about a stool, a stool typically has three legs 
And for a stool stand up, and that looks like a spaceship more than a stool, which is why I don't draw, but this is here for us. Um, a stool has three different pieces to keep it up. If you take out one of those things, the stool becomes unstable. And if you rely on just one leg, the stool is no longer a stool, it just falls over. So that's the same way that you can think about telemarketing is that it's a piece of a campaign. It can exist on its own. While you can't have it on your own, it's just not as effective on its own. So what do we do to make telemarketing more effective? Well, we add more legs to the stool so it can stand up it can, and it can balance better. So when uh, you think about what are those pieces, you can see that some of them are listed here as the stars. So there's advertising, there's brand, there's content, and all that leads to revenue, which is ultimately what we use telemarketing at the end of the day to generate. Appointments, we need MQLs, we need TQLs, however you qualify it. We need to generate the interest in our product and drive demand so we can ultimately get to revenue. As a marketer here at Televerde, I have a pipeline and I have a revenue number and telemarketing helps me get there, but telemarketing by itself isn't how we get here. It's all these different pieces and parts that help me get to the revenue and help our con company continue to grow. So let's dive in and show you how we do it. Um, how do we make telemarketing more effective? So that way you can actually have telemarketing as part of your coordinated campaign and it's not the stool here with one leg. So first things first, data matters. When you are calling into a campaign, um, whether you select an industry or you have personas or whatever that looks like for you, you develop who your ICP is, um, you need data to support a telemarketing campaign. And to put it frank, most data sucks. When clients come to us and they say, oh, we have a bunch of responder data. The first thing that our team does is roll their eyes because data usually um, has a shelf life. You can have data in your CRM, but we know that industry standards say that most of that data is going to expire within a couple of years. People move jobs, people move up, people go to different companies, or um, a company is acquired, which is happening often, and that data is no longer accurate. Same thing with phone numbers. Uh, people are switching their, their phone numbers from um, VoIP numbers to where most companies just have cell phones, or you get a direct dial number, um, which is the best case scenario. But data matters. Having accurate data and having data to call on is going to be the key piece to making telemarketing work. If we have a bunch of callers on your campaign or our campaigns and they're consistently calling, they're not able to get in touch with anyone if the data isn't there. So when you have the data, um, or I guess I should say when you have bad data, it ruins the whole thing. None of this works with bad data. So the first thing you do is make sure that you have a good source for data. So places like Discover Org or Zoom Info or places that you can get data and you want to test it. So inside of your CRM, you want to make sure that you keep track of the lead source. So you can buy your data from other platforms or you can generate it if it's coming from inbound. We have a lot of clients that have a lot of inbound data where people are filling out forms on their website, um, opting in for resources, coming to webinars or things like that. And they have that data that's directly reported from the prospect or the customer. And that's great. But again, you still want to verify it. So you can use enrichment services to make sure that you have valid, accurate data, or you can append things on the form submission. So things like Clearbit and ReachForce will help make sure that you have clean data that's actually accurate. Because when an SDR gets on the phone to actually make a call and they don't have a number that works, it's defeating for them, which again is something that leads to poor telemarketing is poor morale and poor support on the phone. If the SDRs don't feel that their data is confident, they don't feel like they're able to do their job well. So they're not gonna want to make those dials and they're not ultimately gonna be able to deliver the appointments and the um, MQLs that you're looking for because the data isn't accurate. So that's the first thing, make sure that the data is accurate. The second thing that you need is to make sure that you have the technology. So gone are the days where an SDR is sitting at a desk and dialing each of the phone numbers that they need to call. Um, an SDR is no longer just going to be sitting there with an Excel, lead, Excel sheet of phone numbers making their dials. You need to enable your, um, your telemarketing campaigns, your SDRs, your BDRs, your ADRs, whoever is making these dials with the technology that's going to help them be most effective. Here at Televerde, we prefer to use a software called Outreach because it allows us to make sure that we have consistent messaging and branding across the board, but it also makes sure that our SDRs is, are as efficient as they can be. So what does that look like for an SDR? As an SDR, I show up into a software that's dedicated for me um, to, to make my telemarketing campaigns, to send out my emails to the prospects. I put them in a sequence that was designed by sales ops, marketing ops, demand gen, 
that has all the right messaging. It's giving me the best targets that I need to call on because I can see their lead scores or if we're using intent data, I can see if their account is surging. I can see all these different data points. So that way when I get on the phone to actually call the prospect, I know about their company. I know about their position. I know that they just got $20 million in funding and then Series C, or they were just featured in Forbes or Wall Street Journal or something like that. So that way that dial to them is as effective as possible. So technology helps that. So one, you have to have the data to support it. Two, you have to have the technology to enable the SDRs because again, we wanna make sure they're efficiently as possible. We don't need thousands of SDRs to achieve what we can now achieve because we have the technology in place. We can serve up the prospects at the right time with the right message to these prospects because we have the technology in place. So what's the third part? So the third part to make all this work, um, after we have the data figured out, after we have the technology figured out, and there's more data that you need other than just the dialing software. Obviously you need something like a CRM to keep track of all your prospects, um, to, touch those, to keep track of those touch points and your digital campaigns. You need a marketing automation tool to score and to, to send nurture emails. Um, the, all those different bits and pieces are what helps make up the technology piece of the stack. And that's what's gonna help the telemarketing efforts be more effective when you surround that telemarketing with, um, with technology. So the, the third thing that you'll need is a coordinated campaign. So my biggest pet peeve lately that I've, I've been seeing is as I get on calls with some of our sales reps here, is a prospect will come to us and say, hey, we need a telemarketing campaign. We need X amount of SDRs. What can you guys do for us? Again, what we do here is we just roll our eyes and we say, not again. Those are not our favorite types of campaigns because we know, again, going back to the stool example, a campaign cannot be successful with just telemarketing. It needs other bits and pieces on it. So we like to make sure that as, uh, as your partner in your demand gen campaign, ultimately we want the same thing that you want. We want to help you get to revenue. We want to help you drive more demand for your services, your products, your solutions. And the best way to do that is to make sure that it's a coordinated campaign. So what does that look like? A coordinated campaign, um, of course, has telemarketing as a piece of it. Um, it's the core piece of it, and it's what we do really well. But we also make sure that there's other things like advertising um, as part of that campaign. So to give you an example, before our callers will call into a campaign, or a call into an account, we have a list of accounts that are surging. So we use third party intent data and surging is when someone at that account is showing interest on a topic that we care about. So let's say in this case, it's telemarketing that they're surging about. And we know that we can provide um, a telemarketing solution that has all these bits and pieces to help them get to revenue. So that's a topic that we care about. So we then start to show them advertising on telemarketing. So they see who Televerde is, they see that we are experts at telemarketing campaigns, but not just telemarketing, we're experts at getting them to revenue, which is the end goal. So we show them the roadmap through advertising. So that way, by the time that an SCR goes to dial them, they go to call them and say, hey, Chuck, I just noticed that you were just visiting our website, you were checking out the, obviously you're not gonna be as creepy as this, but to give you an example, the SDR would have this type of info. They visited three case studies on the website, again, going back to the technology hey, wanted to reach out and see if we can help you with telemarketing efforts. What are your priorities for the year when it comes to telemarketing? That's a much better conversation to have um, calling into an account than, hey, Chuck, just wanted to see if you had any demand gen goals for the year. It's not as broad. It's much more personalized. Prospects at the end of the day want a personalized outreach, which is why things like Netflix are so popular and why Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn all have algorithms to make sure that the, the touches or the, the points that they have, the contacts that they have with you are personalized. Uh, more and more people are wanting a personalized touch and we can make sure that it's, the advertising is personalized so that the telemarketing is also personalized. So advertising is one piece of this coordinated campaign. So we show ads to build brand awareness, to, to build value, to also drive some engagement. If we see that someone's engaging with these ads, engaging with things on our website, that'll then circle that up for an SDR to call a telemarketing campaign, it'll circle up for an SDR to call that person that has visited the website multiple times. Because we know that person's interested in a product or service or solution that we offer. And that again gives the SDR a much better place to call out instead of a cold call. This person already has some awareness. They've already started doing some research. So they're much more likely to generate a deliverable from that than they would be if they just called in cold. 
So that's where advertising can help. The other piece that can help is brand. Um, again, advertising can do this as well, but building brand awareness. So brand helps you make sure that you're recognized. You're recognized for something. When you see a commercial on TV, um, you see that it has great graphics and great flow, and you're like, hmm, that's probably an Apple ad. Apple doesn't need to say this is an Apple advertising um, for you to know that it's Apple. Same thing with brand. Brand is what's gonna help the long-term growth of your campaigns. So as you start to develop brand by creating content, having a consistent messaging or design or things that you do that are in alignment with your brand, whether it's events or user conferences or things like that, it'll help make your telemarketing campaigns a lot easier because when you get on the phone with a prospect and you say, hey, I'm from Televerde, that prospect already knows, oh, I know Televerde, they're the ones with the great campaigns. Same thing with any other B2B company. If, they, if you give them a call and you say, hey, I'm from X company, you want the prospect to say, oh, I'm aware of them, not, oh, who are you again? That's where brand comes in. So this is creating the content. And brand is a long-term play. So brand isn't something that you can trade on overnight. Brand is a long-term asset that you build. So all the content that you're creating, all the messaging that you're putting out, um, all the graphics that you create for your blog post, or the value that you demonstrate, or um, the events that you put on, or the swag that you give out, or the personalized touches that you have with a person is what helps build your brand. It's, it's a bunch of different things that help build that. But again, it helps your telemarketing campaigns perform better because there's um, awareness in the market. And we see this with our clients and it's part of you know, our onboarding, not onboarding process, but during the pre-sales process, we ask our prospects like, hey, one, do you know who your ideal customer profile is? Um, what campaigns do you currently have in market? And then we do some assessment to figure out what is their a brand awareness in that market because if we're competing in a space where they know who the brand is, our telemarketing campaign is going to be much more successful because our SDRs don't have to get on the phone and explain who the brand is, why they're calling, what services and solutions they offer. It makes it for a much better conversation on the phone when your brand is, uh, is known. So the other piece that can help um, telemarketing efforts um, be much more successful in this coordinated campaign approach is content. You have to create a lot, a lot of content. And it's, it's almost like a treadmill of content you have to create, um, but it's again, personalized types of content. So we know if we're going after a prospect in the manufacturing space, we want to create uh, case studies, we want to create articles, we want to create webinars, we want to create infographics that are specific to that industry. So that way, if that prospect comes to our website to do research or they engage with an ad or they go to see who our brand is or there's a call um, from one of our SDRs, we have content to support that effort. It's not just a standalone. So if a prospect says, hey, I like your product and solutions. How would this work for me in my industry? You have case studies and content already available to send that prospect. So again, it helps the telemarketing touch because the SDR is going to be um, more of in a consulting role more so than, hey, let me pitch you uh, my product and buy my stuff. They're going to say, yeah, I would love to send you some stuff. Here's a couple of articles for people. Maybe it's their competitors and that space that we've done well with before. And here's some case studies on how we perform with them. Um, let's reconvene in a week and let's see um, if you have any additional questions from that. That's going to make your telemarketing campaigns much more effective by having the content in place. So when we, when we look at what the coordinated campaigns are, um, some of the most successful coordinated campaigns um, that you have are going to be touches between advertising, between organic content, demonstrating your brand, but also um, that what's going to make the help the telemarketing better um, is follow-ups. So one of the most successful campaigns that I've seen based just on the research that I've done is that um, campaigns where you're following up on an action that the prospect has taken or something that you've sent the prospect are the most successful ones. So I was recently on a webinar where I can't remember the name of the company had a, a telemarketing campaign where the core of it was they wanted to get someone on the phone, they wanted to book a meeting, they wanted to book um, you know, a, a meeting with one of the decision makers at that company, and they sent them a direct mail piece first. So obviously they did all their scoring through the technology before, um, they figured out what were the best accounts for them, they figured out you know, who are the ideal people, and then they looked for engagement within that account, and they sent that person a direct mail piece. So I think that it was a package that had a couple of things, it may have been a box of cupcakes or something like that, but the SDR, instead of calling in cold, would send them an email and say, hey, wanted to make sure you got the package that I sent to you. You think you're much more likely to open that email versus, 
hey, quick question, or can I jump on a call with you, or do you have time, or hey, wanted to make a quick connection, or a LinkedIn direct message that you get from some SDR that you don't even know, my guess is that you're more likely to open that email and say, what package? And when they call you, and most of the time, if you don't answer the phone right away, and they leave you a voicemail, and they say, hey, this is Xavier with Televerde, just wanted to follow up and see if you got the package that I sent you. You're much more likely to respond to that voicemail and say, hey, no, I haven't got your package yet. What package was it? Or if you got the package, you say, yeah, it was great. Thanks for sending that over. Oh, by the way, what do you guys do? That's how you lead into a conversation. So that's the piece of having a coordinated campaign is when you have it coordinated that way, um, it's empathy driven. It's not what's in it for me, the SDR. I'm going to hit my number by booking this meeting. It's what's in it for the prospect. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. What's in it for them? And when you have the empathy driven telemarketing campaigns that are based on follow up actions, whether it's, hey, I just left you a voicemail about X, Y, and Z, that's, what you're, that's what's in your email. Um, that email, is, what we've seen just based on our own testing, is much more likely to be open than a cold, open email. So if we call first and then send an email, because it's coordinated with those touches, and that's why we use things like outreach to coordinate those touches, um, that email is much more likely to be opened by the prospect and to be considered. So as a bonus, there's one other thing I want to talk about. Um, we talked about our coordinated campaigns. We talked about technology. We talked about why data matters. Um, I wanted to talk about intent-driven campaigns. So intent-driven campaigns are my fun uh, campaigns that I've been executing lately. And the reason why they're fun is because, one, it's personalized. Two, it's really efficient. But three, it generates really good results. So um, if you're not aware with intent, um, intent data is essentially when you're looking at a prospect's journey um, from, let's say, this side of the board to the other side of the board, they have to go through all these different steps to get to your solution here. So with a marketing automation tool, we can see what's going on here on our website, but we can't see what's going on in 99% of the journey over here. So with intent data, it allows us to see what a prospect, or not a prospect because it's anonymized, we can see what an account is doing at all these various different steps before they get to our data. So with an intent campaign, what I can do is say, at this first step, if an account is surging, showing interest, or engaging on a topic on another website related to telemarketing, I want to trigger an ad campaign to those people. So as they scroll in their LinkedIn newsfeed, they will see a campaign about telemarketing. They've just been researching telemarketing on Forbes. They went to Forrester to do some telemarketing research. They went to Google, did a couple of different searches there about telemarketing. And I want to join that conversation there because statistics show, I think it's like 30 or 40% um, of the time. If you, the first person to join that conversation and that buyer's journey is more likely to win the business at the end. So I'm getting ahead of our customer, our, our competitors by using an intent on the advertising touch. So this is our first touch is with an advertising. So it's usually LinkedIn. It could be on Google display or some type of display ad or some ad network but it's relevant to the topic that they're already researching. So when they go and see the ad, they click through, now I'm starting, starting to gather data on their engagement. So let's say they go visit a case study on our website about telemarketing, they visit a couple of blog posts, they watch a webinar on telemarketing. I now have enough data on this prospect because now I can say their account was searching on telemarketing. They are now searching telemarketing on the website and I can say, because it's on our third party, on our first party um, tracking, I can say that it was Jane Doe at this company that is surging on telemarketing that was researching telemarketing on our website. So now I can feed that data back to our SDRs and say, hey, Jane was surging, or her company is surging on telemarketing. She went to our website, looked at two case studies and a blog post and a webinar about telemarketing. Let's send her an email and you reach out with a phone call about telemarketing. It's personalized for her, it's personalized for her journey, and I was able to enter in that conversation, build brand awareness, serve her content, and make sure that this telemarketing touch was as effective as possible. And what we've seen with that is drastically lower costs on the advertising side. We have, we're less on this content hamster wheel of having to create all this content because we are just creating content around what those intent topics are and servicing them to our prospects. And once they engage, then it's kind of they're choosing their own journey. 
But once they engage to a certain level, we're using the technology to serve that to the SDR. So the SDR is no longer having to go through a list of hundreds of thousands of other prospects to figure out who they should be talking to. We just told the SDR, Jane Doe at this company, who the company, someone at the company is researching telemarketing, is now researching telemarketing on our website. This is who you should reach out to and talk to her about telemarketing to get to revenue. So that's what we talk about when we say it's a coordinated campaign. Um, when it's coordinated in that way, the telemarketing efforts skyrocket. Um, you cost are better, you're much more efficient, you have less SDRs that you need, your SDRs are happier and they're generating more deliverables because it's all coordinated. And it all started back by, let's figure out the data. So figure out the numbers that we need to call, who we're calling, let's get their info. Let's use intent data to get in to on top of that conversation. So let's join it as early as possible. Let's build brand by using content. Um, let's get in front of them and then have a personalized touch. Doing it that way is gonna make sure that your telemarketing campaigns don't fall flat. When you have telemarketing just by itself, that campaign is most likely gonna fall flat because your contact rates are anywhere from one to 5%. So that means out of a thousand dials, you're only getting in touch with one to five, or I guess I should say out of a hundred dials, let me make the math easier on myself. Out of a hundred dials at one to 5%, you're only talking to one to five people every time you make a hundred calls. And SDR is probably only gonna make 200 calls a day. So if they're only getting in touch with 1% of those people, um, your telemarketing campaigns are gonna be a lot of steam. They're burning through a lot of data to get to those deliverables for you. If as a marketer, you can put all these pieces in place and make sure that when an SDR calls out, they're getting in touch with 10 to 15 to 20% of those people. Your SDRs are gonna be happier. They're gonna deliver more deliverables. You're gonna to get to this revenue number a lot faster and you're gonna do it with less budget spent, more efficiency, and that just makes everyone happier. So when you can do those things, um, it's gonna make your telemarketing efforts skyrocket. So just as a quick recap, I know I talk really fast and I go through a lot of this pretty quickly, but first things first. So the data matters. Um, you can't drive results with crappy data. Seriously, it just ruins this whole thing. You're, you're sitting on a stool with one leg. It just doesn't work. You're not, it's not going to happen. Second thing is you need to have the technology in place. You got to have, um, whether you're using dialers because you have a mass amount of data or you're using outreach or sales law or inside sales, whatever tool you're using, you need to make sure that it's efficient for the SDRs and makes them more productive. If they can make more calls and you're doing this coordinated campaign approach, you can generate more deliverables. So you have to have the tech. It's table stakes at this point. All of your competitors are using technology. You should be using it too. And if you're not, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. The third thing is coordinated campaigns. Telemarketing can exist by itself. Um, I mean, it can, but it'll just suck. It's not going to be as effective. Um, telemarketing is just a piece of the puzzle. So it's just one of these legs on the, on the stool. And um, you need to make sure that you have coordinated campaigns. So you need to make sure that there's nurture campaigns. You need to make sure that there's advertising touches. You need to make sure that there's direct mail. Um, again, going back just to recap is the most successful campaigns are ones that were following up with a previous action. So if we sent a prospect a webinar um, as our first touch and the call is, Hey, just wanted to make sure that you got registered for that webinar. What did you thought? What, what were your thoughts? Did you have any questions? How can we help you better? Um, that's much more effective than a cold pitch. The only person that's really answering the phone nowadays, like um, if for a prospect, is if it is a follow call or it's something that's engaging them or they've already started this journey. Um, most people just aren't answering the phones, and that's the trend that, that we're starting to see happen, which is why things like social selling are so important because. Social selling will help make this telemarketing piece more uh, effective because you can get in front of that prospect. You can build a relationship before making that call. And that's really essentially what it all boils down to. But the reason why you have the coordinated campaigns, the reason why you have the technology and the ads and the brand is to build a relationship. At the end of the day, if the relationship isn't established, you're not gonna answer the phone or respond to any of the emails. I mean, when your mom calls, you're most likely, unless you're mad at your mom, you're most likely gonna answer that phone call. Um, the same thing um, happens in business. If someone that you have a relationship calls, you're probably gonna take that call. So with marketing and demand gen, if we can build the relationship through content, using our brand, servicing great content through advertising, giving prospect uh, value to that prospect, 
you're most likely going to take that call and it's going to help you um, or it's going to help that SDR and that company get to revenue and deliverables better. So really that's it. Um, I just want to do a quick recap. Um, I think as you put these things in place, you'll start to see um, how this works uh, much more effectively for you. If you are still struggling with your telemarketing efforts, you still want um, a little bit of help, you want to dive deeper on the subject, we will be doing a couple more webinars on telemarketing, on how we do advertising, how we do intent campaigns. Um, and we will be putting those out here soon. There's always great content on our blog. And then also, if you just want our direct help with it, um, you can always reach out to sales um, or fill out a contact desk form on the website and we'd be happy to chat with you. But for now, that is all I got for today. Thanks for joining.